Wow. It's been a while. So uh, how's everybody? I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, today is Monday. Monday, man, it's a whirlwind. So uh, anyway, uh, obviously just stoked after the championship game, the way that thing went. I know we talked a little bit afterwards, but um, it's, been a, it's been a fun ride. Didn't slow down coming out of that game straight into recruiting, recruiting weekend, now into bowl prep. It's uh, It's been a mad dash. So the good thing about an early bowl game is it's an early bowl game. The bad thing about an early bowl game is it's an early bowl game. So there's not a lot of spare time at this point. Guys are excited. I've had a really good week to kind of just take care of their bodies coming off the championship and a physical football game. Excitement level is extremely high. Fired up about going to L.A. Fired up about playing Oregon State, uh, but also very aware of the challenge that that presents. We'll be on the field today to practice, travel day tomorrow, and and then really kind of treat it like a normal game week, if that makes sense, with the game being on Saturday and and having uh, the, the entire week last week really been dedicated to to healing their bodies up and recruiting. So we'll get a we'll get a normal game week in this week and, and try to be our very best on Saturday to finish this thing off with a win uh, against what I think is a really, really good football team. Uh, they uh, they are built well. Uh, it, it's it's gonna be as good a team as we've seen all year. Comparable to me, you know, Washington State, BYU, Boise, San Diego State, just physically a body type. We've won some of those. We've lost a couple of those. We're going to have to play our best um, and, and present some some challenges uh, to our defense a little differently than what they've seen. These guys are really, really good at spreading the ball out and throwing it. One of the best backs in the country. And, um, and just for our offense, the size matchups, as we've talked about at some point during the season, will be things that we really have to to use speed and quickness to overcome. I'd uh, love to see our guys finish off with this one. It would be an unbelievable legacy to leave behind for this senior class and, and really just this team in general, considering last year and, and, and just all that happened. I know we've documented and talked about that a good bit. To be able to really just kind of get back on track and overcome the odds all season long, all the way even into and through the – championship game this would be no different uh, but 11 and 3 with the conference title with two power five wins in this particular season considering all the things that carried into it would be unbelievable and and i'd love that for our guys win or lose they've done a phenomenal job of setting us on a great path for the future uh, and and really um you know the first mountain west conference championship uh, all the things that come with that this this game only just adds icing to the cake. Nothing's going to tarnish their their legacy that they have left. But I, I want it for them, and, and I can feel the energy in the building. They want it as well. And we're going to go try to play our best ball uh, on Saturday. And I think that may be the coolest thing about how the season's progressed. We needed to play that last Saturday in San Diego, uh, and, and we did. Uh, and this would be a, a great just kind of grow from that, carry the momentum for that, and go out and play even better. And I think it's going to take that kind of effort to get a win. Hey, Coach Ajay Salveson. Uh, Doug Hoffman put out a really cool tweet about how great this receiving core has been in regards of the Utah State football history and, and what they've been able to do. For you, how good has this receiving core been? Is it the best you've ever seen in regards of your coaching career? Wow, that's that was a big shoes to fill. Uh, they definitely are in that conversation. Um, we've had some really good seasons throwing the ball in the past. Numbers have been high. But it's hard to argue with the – the big plays when needed in big moments. And the fact that collectively across the board, everybody got involved. So they're absolutely one of the best we've ever had. Uh, e each group is different. Uh, I'd be, I'm not one of those guys ranking them in order kind of guys. They're just, uh, this has been a phenomenal group. And, and we're, we lifted the trophy uh, due to a lot of heavy, heavy lifting on, on those guys' part. Coach Al from the Gideon and Logan. Um, congratulations on the championship. And what did that do? I know you can't talk specifically about recruiting, but what did that do to the recruiting season for you to win a championship? Did that help you at all in talking with you? Oh, absolutely. What I mean, their reaction? Uh, nothing but positive. I mean, excited kids that were committed, uh, super fired up kids that we were in play with and really recruiting already. Uh, you know, I think it, it maybe pushes some of those guys over the edge. We've had some really good news in the last few days in recruiting 
guys that were committed state, you know, on campus this weekend all left with a ton of energy. We're battling on some veteran uh, transfer type guys, some kind of free agent guys that would help plug in some areas where we're losing some seniors and some some really good players. So, yeah, winning helps everybody, and winning a championship takes it to another level. It, it is not. Uh, it doesn't make the final decision for anybody, but it definitely moves people in a positive direction. And it shows people that we can be competitive and they're going to be competitive every year and, and that you can win championship here. You don't have to go uh, somewhere else to get that done. Uh, so I, I think we were doing everything we can to, to really build the roster and recruiting is where that gets done. And the more uh, momentum we have going in and recruiting, the better off we are. Coach, you mentioned that you want to approach it just like any other game week, but obviously it, it, it that's kind of impossible given the circumstances surrounding the week leading up to it. Um, how do you find the balance this week of, of you know, letting um, the kids enjoy the moment that they've earned, you know, getting to this point while also being zeroed in and focused um, on, you know, tackling the opponent? Yeah, that's, that's a big challenge. I think everybody faces it every year. Uh, you know, you, you want to soak up every ounce of, of fun that you can. They've earned it. This is a celebration of the season in my mind. I know some people don't necessarily agree with that philosophy, but these guys have worked hard, earned the right to be at a bowl game. It's built the way it's built for them to enjoy it. You know, the Jimmy Kimmel Show, Maui Gyms, In-N-Out Burger, uh, Universal Studios. There's just a ton of cool things for them to enjoy. And so I take the approach, and I believe this wholeheartedly. The team that really wants to be there, really wants to be competitive on game day will. Uh, we all know when kickoff is, and and we know that it's our responsibility, each man, staff, and player, to be ready. Enjoy the opportunities that the bowl presents and have a blast. But when it's time to lock in and go to meetings, time to lock in and go to practice, time to lock in and be prepared for games, it is, it's our responsibility to do that. And so I'll continue to remind them. We'll set a schedule we think that is reasonable this week so that we get our sleep, get our rest, but still have a great time. But ultimately, if our team really wants to win this game badly enough, then we'll go out and play with um, an effort level and energy level that creates an opportunity for us to do that. If if they're satisfied at this point, then, then, then it won't happen. And it won't matter what I say or do. Uh, it's going to come from them. I made that really clear to them yesterday. I believe that. And I think you see that all across college football bowl games. Some teams look really inspired and excited to be there. Some teams look like they've checked out. I expect our guys will show up and play lights out. That's what I expect of them. That's the energy we have in the building. But it is a it is a difficult task for every head coach and every staff and every team to juggle both. Hopefully we're mature enough to do so. Coach Al again, uh, I'm not a social media guy like these other guys on the field here, but I haven't read as much. We always know this time of the year, we have to ask most coaches if anybody's opting out of bowl games or not wanting to play on your team. Is that a problem at all? On your team? It's not. I mean, we're, we're going to have, like any team at this point, we're going to have a few guys that may enter the transfer portal. They're looking to play a little bit more than they are here. But in terms of guys opting out, these guys are excited about the, uh, the play, you know, the game. And I've had zero conversation with anybody saying, Coach, I'm I, I'm opting out. I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Everybody's excited about going, ready to play. So if it happens, it'll be news to me. Uh, it has not happened to this point. Uh, the only you know couple guys that will miss either injury or a couple of family um, conflicts that just are unavoidable. And like I said, we may have a guy or two that uh, are, are ready to move to the portal and start looking for another home that uh, are trying to play a little bit more than maybe they're going to get to here. And one or two of those guys may choose to miss this game. Uh, and, and But that's the that's the landscape we're in at this point in college ball. Coach Anderson, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. Uh, after 13 games, how would you assess uh, – how, how healthy do you feel your team is after 13 games compared to some other seasons you've been a part of? Well, compared to some other seasons, uh, we're really healthy. Now we're – we're bumps and bruises like you would expect this this deep into the season. And last week's game was extremely physical, so that that's part of it. But we we really avoided the large number of season-ending injuries. Uh, I, I've had a season where we had 19, and we somehow we found a way to win eight games. I don't still don't know how. We were duct taped together, 
and guys moving positions all over the place. We stayed away from that uh, with how we prepared and I think how we practiced, uh, and, and we were really fortunate as well. And we're, we're pretty healthy going to this. We'll have the same team we had last week playing against San Diego State for the most part. We didn't lose anybody, and we have a chance maybe for a couple guys to feel a little bit better. So I, I, would, I would tell you we're in as good a shape as you can expect to be this, this late in, in a long, really very physical fo you know, football season. Coach, you've probably been asked a lot of questions about this over the last couple of weeks, but um, talk about the road success you guys have found this season. You guys have been a historically good team on the road, and obviously you'll probably hope to continue that. Again, I guess it's more of a neutral site, but still technically away from home. So talk about that and, and how you guys did that this season. I think it comes from really, really preparing them uh, well, obviously on the front end. Staff did a good job. Went in with plans that kids understood where they could be free and play. Coach Jackson and the strength staff had us in great shape, so we were able to play hard and, and fast deep into the game. But um, I, I think a lot of it is just the maturity and the leadership inside the locker room with a group of guys that that there was a level of confidence uh, that that we continued to – we gained early and built on all season long. A lot of those were last-second victories – Several, obviously, we played lights out and, and, and stretched things out, but a lot of them came down the wire in a group of guys that just would continue to fight and play, play all the way through regardless of the circumstances. And Every team is different. When you, you, you can have a really good team if the coaches lead them, you're going to have a great team if the players lead. And, and I felt like we had some, some guys that really uh, built a culture of accountability and discipline uh, in that locker room, which is right in line with our core beliefs and core values of, of being selfless, tough, and accountable. And, and that's what you saw. And I think it's what allows you to be really good on the road in tough environments. Coach, what's Coach the Anderson, best thing about Oregon State? What do you think about Oregon State's oh. best thing? Uh, you know, they're, typ they're your typical Power 5 football team. Long, rangy, they got speed. Their offensive line is is phenomenal. I, I don't know exactly what the award is that they're up for, but their old line is up for a collective award is one of the best groups in the country. I think it's absolutely, uh, you know, they they definitely deserve that kind of recognition. I think the quarterback is super poised. He's one of those guys that will sit in the pocket to the last second. And then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they got a first-team all-conference running back. So there's a lot of things defensively. They've had some trouble, but have settled in the last few weeks. And the thing that shows up to me over there is length, and they play really hair on fire. They are flying to the ball. Whatever changes they made over there, the environment changed. You can see them chasing the ball, and it shows up on special teams. Most of those guys are defense players. Uh, so we're going to have to match that intensity level. Length and speed is going to be an issue because we're not real, real long. Uh, but uh, that intensity level that you see – it shows up on film. It shows up visibly on film. So there's a couple of challenges, and those are the areas I think really uh, that they're at their best. They have a really good linebacker tandem in of Roberts and State. Uh, yep. You guys have faced some good linebackers this year, though. Muma, some other guys. Uh, how, how well do you feel like you're prepared for a, for a tandem like that, considering some of the guys you've squared off against this year? Well, we've seen some good ones, and at times we've played good, and at times we've played bad. So uh, it kind of depends on the week. Uh, for us, in a short week with all the chaos coming out of the championship game, if we'll just do what we're supposed to do, then you have a chance to maybe minimize those guys' effectiveness. If we go in there, and, and again, we're not focused on the details of what we're supposed to do, and, and we don't go out and play with the intensity level that, that we need to, those guys are going to make play after play after play. They're obviously built for it, and they've done it all season. Uh, so it um, it starts and ends up front, regardless of what all the other football looks like on both sides. Our offensive and defensive lines are going to have to play great for us to be in this game. And it would not surprise me if it's just like it was when we played Washington State. It's going to be one of those that some of the matchups are going to look ugly early. Those linebackers are going to be flying and chasing early. I'm hoping that we can fatigue them, get to the second and third levels, play and play and play, and, and hopefully – things will start looking better for us as the game continues. And, and so we uh, we have to try to slow those guys down. You don't stop them. They're good at what they do. I know you were asked in the Bulls uh, press conference, but can you talk a little bit about Calvin Tyler against them? 
And has he been able to help you guys at all with some of this that they do? You know, if he's helped us in the meeting room, I'm not aware of it. Um, you know, he's he's been focused on just getting better. I, I don't. I think he looks forward to the opportunity. Uh, he's got a lot of friends there. And, and maybe there's a chip on his shoulder to prove to those guys that they should have utilized him more when, when he was there. That'd be natural. But uh, he doesn't come here with a ton of animosity against that group. I think he feels really good about his opportunity just here and, and what it's turned into be and what it can be in, in the future. And at the end of the day, we raised a trophy, and that's what he came here for. So, uh, But in terms of X's and O's, uh, very limited, I would think, as to what we've got for him and nothing that's come across my desk. So I, I would tell you, you know, we just got to have to prepare and, and do what we do and, and, and probably really not that concerned about what that they do so much. The coach Smith is kind of known as being a quarterback coach, kind of a, that way. But they look like they're really balanced because of the running back they have. I mean, DJ Baylor looks like he's a really good one, but they – Still, obviously capable throw the ball. Yeah, I think they're extremely balanced. Their their offensive line has the ability to do both, and and they've done both. And and I agree with him. I think he takes a very balanced approach. We try to do the same. That doesn't always mean 50-50 run pass, but they have run the ball well, and they can protect the quarterback. And as I mentioned, he has uh, a he is very very good at hanging in the pocket. Feet are are great. And he can make all the throws. So you have to defend them across the board. Uh, they don't just throw it to one guy. They don't just throw the ball. They don't just run the ball. They're very balanced in terms of their who they get the ball to and their run pass ratio uh, is very equal. And so, again, creates tremendous challenge for the defense. Coach, I know you've talked about how uh, what this season's meant for this team based on what they've been through last year. But what about you personally? what the, the tragedy you've been through and then moving across the country, uh, Mary and Brittany and, and all that, and now having a Mount West Conference Championship underneath your guys' belt. For you personally, what has the season meant to you? You know, I, I went through I went through a stretch where going to work every day wasn't much fun. And um, honestly, just getting out of bed wasn't much fun, to be truthful. I think anybody's lost their best friend of 28 years and then lose your dad – you know, those are the first two phone calls I made after everything that happened in my life. Every big, every bad, every everything. Those are the first two calls. And so um, I tell people I, I loved my time in Jonesboro. Uh, I'm proud of the job we did. They're not satisfied. I'd love to not have to drag those people through all the things we went through for the last few years. But, you know, we didn't see we didn't know what the ending line looked like. We were trying to win uh, in football, trying to win uh, against cancer as well. But uh, it, it did take a toll, and uh, I hit some really dark places in my life. And I'm I'm so grateful that God brought Brittany and the girls into my life to somebody that understood what it was like to lose as well. Lost her mother just a couple weeks after I lost Wendy. Um, we both clinged to God. We became really close friends, and next thing you know, we fell in love, not by design. But this move here, unexpected as it was, but, man, just so refreshing – Refreshing. I, I needed to to be able to move away from so many visible triggers and 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 smells and and sights and sounds that just would not let you move beyond uh, that that period. And here it's been amazing people, beautiful scenery, phenomenal group of guys to be around every day. And I told them for Thanksgiving, everybody's guys, everybody kind of talking about what they're thankful for and. I broke down in tears in front of them that they have no idea how big of a healing uh, part of my life they've been. They've really given me the joy of what I've always loved to do, which is coach and, and be around the sport. And I'd lost that. Uh, and this season has has been a healing process. I'm beyond thankful to uh, for God just bringing us here and creating those opportunities. But every person involved in this room has had a part in that. And, and there's no bigger joy than to – go on a journey with a group of guys against all odds every step of the way and see them just continue to uh, overcome those. Uh, and so uh, exceeded every expectation. I said, I've said that a million times. I could not have pictured it uh, to be the ride it's been. And, and the cool thing is we're really just getting started. So, Logan, I'll ask you the same question I asked, Coach. With, with bowl weeks, you kind of have to find – a balance between, you know, enjoying the week and the experience and because you, you've earned it 
And then at the same time, you want to go and win the game. So you have to be locked in. Mm-hmm. How do you feel like um, you personally and, and as a team, how do you manage that, you know, trying to have fun, um, but also being locked in on Oregon State? Yeah, it's always challenging sometimes. It depends on the team. Uh, I've been in many bowl games before. Um, every every team's different. Every year's different. Um, with the maturity of this team that we've uh, gone through the, the year, um, I think it would be pretty – uh, pretty easy to to figure out. Hey, this is practice time. We need to lock in and focus, and then it's time to cut loose. Um, I think when you when you play bowl games and you're there for a week, uh, it's always good to cut loose. Uh, in my past experience, and then you uh, you work hard during the day, and then you cut loose when it's time to cut loose. And I think that uh, if we do that, we'll have a good chance to go out there and play our best, play loose. Logan, Outlook, Jimmy, and you and Logan, we talked to you about your preparation and how you watch. You talked about that one night. You, you watched it starting the next day when you played a Friday night to Saturday. You probably had a little more time with recruiting going on and you being here to look at Oregon State a little bit more while the coaches have been out recruiting. What do you see of their defense? And does do you have more time? Do you feel like you know them a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. We've been watching a lot. And I think that uh, what really shows up is the last few games. Um, they got a new uh, guy calling plays for them in the defensive uh in the back end or just the whole defense in general. And they've been playing their best ball the last three weeks. Um, their, their last three games have been their best games defensively, I thought. Um, and they, they're they really talented in many areas and they're playing really good ball. And I think that um, it shows up on tape that they play hard. They're really sound in uh, all the coverages and they play really well. So it'd be a tremendous challenge for us. What specifically can you tell us about how they play defense or what's really good about their defense? Yeah, they're always in your face. Um, they play really good defense and in, in, in all phases, uh, technically sound. Um, they're really athletic. They're fast. Um, and it's going to be really a good challenge. Um, it's a really good defense. Logan, a lot of people saw the Wednesday video. Uh, uh, you shared that moment with uh, Coach Anderson. Uh, you got a little bit emotional, just uh, which I would have done the same thing if I was in your, your shoes for sure. But just uh, talk about the journey and what it's been like, how much of an emotional roller coaster it has been from arriving here, breaking your foot, and then being where you are right now. Yeah, where do I start? Um, the start, I guess, from when I left Arkansas State, um, never in my mind committing to that school where I thought I would ever leave. Um, I was raised to get the job done um, until it's done. And I, um, but as some, sometimes you have to leave, um, in certain situations. And I feel like that was the best, uh, opportunity for me. Uh, it was really hard leaving. I didn't, I love that school. Um, they were nothing but good to me and, uh, I'll always have, they'll always be a part of me. Um, but I had to leave and then I come here, uh, ready for a new journey, uh, with coach Anderson and, and then just a minor setback, um, out pretty much the whole year until the season started. Um, so that was hard. Guys, I didn't really, couldn't really mingle with the guys as much as I wanted to. Couldn't, couldn't play, couldn't show them that I was here for them, and and wanted to uh, show them what I was about. So I had to sit on the sidelines for a, a lot of the spring and summer. Um, I didn't say much. Um, just did my job. Went in, watched film a lot, uh, tried to learn everything I could, um, and stuff like that. And then when I knew my time was ready, um, I was going to show them that I was here for uh, to win a championship and and did whatever it needed. to to do to to win a championship and and do everything I need to do on my end to help us uh, win and so I think that uh, it eventually played out um, and that's what I've been waiting for all year. Um, it was a special moment with me and Coach Anderson. Uh, we share some words that uh, I'll keep between me and him that we've been through a lot and uh, it was just really emotional um, for that aspect and nobody deserves it more than him and this coaching staff and the players on this team um, that were here before me and the guys that transferred. Um, so everybody in this organization deserves everything that we've gotten, and uh, we're looking forward to the next one. Well, I mean, before the season, Logan, you talked to Kent Myers quite often, the former Aggie quarterback. What has he said to you now? You win the championship this year. What have you heard from him? Yeah, we talk a lot. Uh, me and Kent grew up together. He's a little older than me. Um, we played against each other in high school. I was a little baby, 15-year-old kid when he was a senior. Uh, but we played against each other. He whooped me uh, for sure in that game. But uh, no, nah, he's a great dude. Uh, we talk a lot. We talk, talk three or four times a month. Uh, he was just congratulating me. Um, 
and he just said he was really proud of me and he was really happy for the school and all that stuff like that. So he's a good dude. A lot of people reached out. Um, and so I think that uh, it was really important for me to um, try to continue his legacy. Uh, he, Coach Keaton, uh, Kent, Jordan, all those guys um, established here, and I'm just trying to keep it going. <laughs> I think he was a bowl game MVP, as I remember from maybe in the New Mexico Bowl where we played there before. What uh, you win a championship, so you, you really want to win the game this week. You're a winner when you play football. You win. You want to win every game, right? Isn't that the way you approach? Well, absolutely. You try to win everything you do. Yeah, not only in the football games. You try to win everything you compete at, uh, whether it's ping pong in here with Coach Anderson or out on the field of practice or in the game. Um, that's just how I am. That's how this team is. And that's how you prepare. We you work too hard for all year round for twelve to thirteen to fourteen opportunities. We literally work every day for those fourteen opportunities. Um, only twelve are guaranteed. So yeah, you want to win every game. Uh, that's just there's no there's no other option. So you, you work your butt off every week and every day and every second to to get that win. <laughs> Logan, what has been the key to you guys having such success um, on the road um, this year? Yeah, I think it's the mentality that we go into. Um, I personally like, uh, I love home games more than anybody, but I really love away games too. I like going on the road and staying in a hotel with your teammates uh, in a hostile environment. You're the only one in the city that's rooting for you in that stadium. They're the only one uh, rooting for each other. Um, I like that environment. I like when it's hostile. I like when it's where it's only us in the uh, in the stadium and fighting against everybody else. I like that. I think this team has embraced that. Um, so I think it's a really good mentality we've had all year of just, hey, it's just us. Um, we came into the year like that, whether um, nobody picked us to win, but three or four games this year. So I think that we came in that no matter what, home or away, we, it was just us uh, against the world. And I think we've carried that the whole year. <laughs> Anything else for Logan? You watch the Jimmy Kimmel show on TV, Logan? I've seen it a few times. Yeah, I'm 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 not from the 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 West Coast, so it's hard to watch everything. But no, I, I've seen it a few times. I'd be really excited. A cool experience to see. Justin Al Lewis from TV and you and Logan, just give us your background in bowl games and your experiences where you've been with the teams you've been with. Um, I went to two bowl games while uh, I was at Fresno. We went to the Hawaii Bowl and then the Vegas Bowl. Um, had a lot of fun, and uh, I know we're going to have a lot of fun going to LA Bowl with this group. Uh, Logan, if you like Jimmy Kimmel or knew or watched his show much too, watch the Jimmy Kimmel show, or have you ever watched that very much? Uh, I don't think I've ever watched it, no, but I know who he is. At least you're honest. That's good. <laughs> Justin Rice, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. Um, their offensive line's only given up 10 sacks all year. Uh, obviously, you've had more time than normal to look at them heading into a, a game week. Uh, how, how do you guys make a dent against those guys and, uh, and, and, and get pressure to Nolan? Yeah, we just got to uh, play our game, and we're very aggressive in our, in our blitz schemes. We're very aggressive when we tell our D-line to go eat on a pass down. So they're a very experienced unit. They're very good. They're very athletic. And um, as long as we play our game, I think we'll be just fine with our with our pressures and how we play. How much do you guys come into this game off of how you played against San Diego State? And, uh, you know, mentally, physically, defensively, you guys had the terrific game. You, can you keep that going after waiting a week? Yeah, um, that game gave us a tremendous amount of confidence. I think that's just been happening throughout the whole season, uh, just gaining more confidence, more trust in each other. And you know, just playing better ball as the season went on. So I definitely think we're going to carry that into Oregon State this week. From the first game till now, what's been the biggest improvement of the defense, do you think, as we look at it? I think just trusting the scheme. Uh, you know, a bunch of guys have 
played in a bunch of different schemes, a bunch of different coaches, and just trying to find that trust for that scheme and the coaches telling you what to do is probably the hardest thing to do. And, and not only to trust the coaches, but to trust your players. When you know that you're supposed to be outside leverage and you jump inside and give up the edge, then there's not a lot of trust building. But when you're setting edges and people know that you're going to set edges, they can take better angles and you know get to guys quicker because they know that, that that edge is going to be set or they're going to have help over the top so they can play a lot more aggressive in certain situations. So definitely uh, trust just everything within that. Coaches, players, scheme. Um, the longer you're in it and the longer you're building a bond together, the better you get. Justin, what are the emotions like for you and your fellow seniors heading into this game, especially given, you know, how how great this season has been and, and you know, how are you guys feeling um, heading into this week? Um, very excited. Um, I think I sat with Nick in the locker room for about five minutes, just smiling at each other and just so happy that, you know, we got it to the Mountain West Championship and we won the Mountain West Championship. And now, coming to the bowl week, me and him just both just know how overjoyed we are to finish our senior years outright. And I know that goes along with the rest of the seniors here. So I, I bet they feel the same way that we do. And we're just overjoyed to be here. Justin, uh, I mean, everybody knows this team has played with a chip on its shoulder all, all year long. It was especially palpable in that San Diego State game last week. I mean, everybody could really sense that uh, and feel that. So uh, what, what, what do you do in this game to give yourself that extra edge uh, that you were obviously able to give yourself in that, in that game last week? Um, just knowing that no one still respects us. We're still an underdog in this game, even coming off a championship. Um, so just we love the fact that nobody respects us. Nobody respected us at the beginning of the year. And we've just been leaning on ourselves, knowing that we can really play with people. And, and they're just going to have to come out and play the game and find out for themselves. Can you give us a couple of words of what it's been like to have one more year to play and to come to Utah State and have this happen for you in this season with what you've been through in the rest of your career? Um, I couldn't have asked for a better ending. Um, just had a great time with <clears throat> with these players and made a lot of <clears throat> new friends and couldn't be happier with Coach A and the staff and, you know, ending it with a Mountain West Championship and going to the L.A. Bowl. I mean – it's unreal. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better way to uh, end my college career.